Hey guys, welcome to my first ever what's in my mailbox video. I I mean, I get sent stuff, but not to the degree where like, you know, some people could probably do a video every month for you guys about what they're sent or what they choose to accept. I guess there is quite a difference. You can obviously do a video every month based on like the amount of requests that you get sent to, ge to be sent things, but um, this one is kind of really collective. Some of the stuff I've had for a really long time, so I just really wanna do a video and do a review for you guys. Uh, I think I actually might be able to do another one kind of soon. We'll see. Um, but this one was super, super exciting. There's really great, great products in here. Uh, we'll start off with some hair items. Living Proof had sent over a whole bunch of stuff, I want to say maybe even last year. But this is the one product that I've been like super obsessed with. It's the Perfect Hair Day Nightcap Overnight Perfector. It looks like this. Uh, this one is pretty much out. Like I have maybe like maybe... A couple more uses from this I don't wash my hair like every day I mean I think most of us don't I probably wash my hair mm, a couple times a week so before I blow dry I usually would just put this on or here's the thing I probably blow dry my hair maybe a couple once a week maybe because I just want to go to bed because I'm a nighttime showerer so I don't have the time to just like I don't want to sleep with wet hair so this is awesome I love it I don't know what it does really like when you read the description it just says you apply to damp or dry hair and you distribute it from root to tip focusing on the ends and then it just kind of i don't know it's like i don't want to say it's like a mask for your hair because there's nothing to rinse out but it's just like a really great leave-in treatment it says it lasts up to five shampoos i don't know about that i just do know that i love the way my hair smells i love the way my hair feels it does feel healthier it doesn't mend your split ends or anything but your overall hair just feels good so i've been you know like when you can't pinpoint exactly what it is about a product but you just know that when you don't use it you don't like your hair as much like this is something like that so i highly recommend this um i've had really good luck with a lot of the living proof stuff that i've used and again the scent is like amazing redkin had contacted me and wanted to send over some stuff and it's interesting. I didn't I didn't know what they were going to send. I just, you know, I accepted the, you know, the opportunity because it's Redken. They have such a huge amount of products. And here's the thing. I am very willing to go out and like spend on like skincare and makeup and try new things, but when it comes to hair, a really just really don't know what I what I need to be buying. And two, I haven't found that using anything different has changed like a shampoo, a conditioner, Stuff like that, I've never really found anything that changes my hair dramatically. I have coarse hair, I have dry hair, I have thick hair. Nothing's gonna change that my hair is coarse or thick or dry. So it's like, yeah, you can use conditioners and treatments and stuff, but like it's very temporary. Nothing's gonna actually change the texture of my hair. Maybe the health, not the texture. So when Redken reached out to me, I was like, oh yeah, I'll try your stuff. However, when they sent the stuff over, I had already tried these two things. Like my friend had already sent these to me. Um, a while ago so I had already tried these two and then this was the third item that I had not tried so this line a super cute with the pink packaging I'm not even into pink like this but like I mean hello check out this bottle so it's the pillow proof line you have the blow dry primer and when you you shake it up and then you spray it all over your hair and then it's supposed to cut down your dry time so like I said I had been using I've probably used this since like May so I've already had a lot of experience with it it's so weird um, how a product can make your hair dry faster but it's not damaging maybe it's just me and like my lack of hair knowledge but to me i'm like if i apply something that's going to make my hair dry faster like some kind of chemical that's going to make my hair dry faster but it's not going to ruin my hair or damage it further this is also like a heat protectant also so i don't know i was really impressed with this product so if you're somebody like that blow dries your hair a lot, I would totally recommend this. It's a heat protectant, it does help your hair dry faster, it does not create further damage. This thing is the Pillow Proof Blow Dry 2 Day Extender. It's an oil absorbing dry shampoo. I like this a lot too. Again, I already had a bottle of this and I had experience with it before they had sent it to me. So this stuff is really great. Like it says two day extender and for me that's perfect. I, I don't really need it extended that much further. I usually buy third day hair, maybe sometimes fourth day hair, that's what I'll finally like like you know wash my hair again but yeah this stuff again super great this is the redken diamond oil i have the original diamond oil which again my friend has sent to me and it's in a black bottle it's super sexy you know black this bottle exactly but black and the dropper like this one is a pump that one is a dropper and it's like something you twist off and you you know apply to your 
apply it to your hands and you run it through your hair. I don't know. I didn't really like the original diamond oil very much. Like it didn't, it didn't do anything bad. It didn't leave my hair greasy. It didn't do anything. It just, I didn't find that it was like particularly amazing. This stuff I really like. Why? Because I find that it's an oil that does everything that this pillow proof blow dry stuff does. Like I've applied this to my hair before blow drying and while it kind of does everything that this does, like it does make your hair dry faster and it creates like a kind of a, like a casing, however you want it, like a coating around your hair that makes it like super shiny. And it has like the oil element. I don't think it like treats your hair, but definitely makes your hair look more beautiful and feel good. So if you have the cash, I would say get the diamond oil blow like pillow proof one. This is really great, but if you're just like someone that, you know, you like a different oil, there's an oil you already love, then something like this is really great. Like if you really like to cut down your dry time, like I thought this was amazing. And this is kind of a fuller bottle. I might give this to someone who blow dries their hair because the one I have is probably like down here already. And uh, next is Proganics. I'm just gonna share this with you. I have not tried it yet because again, don't wash my hair that often. And there's just like a lot of product to get through. <laughs> Um, I've been using Organics and Proganics products for a really long time, like ever since they first launched. So I was really excited when this was, this like kind of landed in my mailbox. So it's the Quench line from Pro, ooh, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to rearrange these bottles on my lap. Um, this is the Quench line. It's a moisturizing and nourishing combo. Um, pa packaging is like super cute. And I'm super excited to use this because winter time. Granted, my hair feels dry all year long, but you definitely feel it more in the winter when it's cold and you got the wind blowing through your hair and everything Everything just feels annoying when you're outside and it's windy and it's cold. So, And this, again, it smells really good. If you don't like coconut, this is not for you. It is highly scented with coconut. When I even opened up the package, I was like, oh, I like that. But um, yes, I am quite excited to use this and it says it's moisturizing while leaving your hair weightless and I feel like coconut oil and coconut water in general has been really really popular in makeup lately like the Marc Jacobs coconut primer I still really do want to try that but I have way too many primers like in my arsenal right now and then Josie Marin uses a lot of coconut water in her products so this is like you know your drugstore maybe um, alternative or drugstore version of trying out some coconut oil products this is the quench leave-in moisture and nourish pump is it like a serum kind of well it's a spray so let's see it can use it to drench your hair and weightless hydration detangles controls frizz and softens okay so that's nice i thought maybe it'd be like a heat protectant but it's not but again excited to try that i'm excited to try this whole thing because a the packaging is really cute sometimes when things just look nice it's like fun to use them this is the quench moisture balm so this one comes out more like a cream and i think it might do very similar things to what this does but in a different form we'll just see how 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 this how these kind of like are similar or different i don't know i'll get back to you if it like is something amazing next up i have some k beauty to share with you korean beauty this is by the brand keep in touch and i posted this on instagram they have such adorable packaging i mean look at that so this is the box so they had sent over their cushion compact i love cushion anything um if you have been watching the channel for a while i had maybe a, one or two years ago i think a couple years ago i had kind of emptied out my chanel uh vita lumiere aqua whatever compact foundation and i put like a empty cushion in it and i was just putting my concealers in it to keep in my purse so i could touch up throughout the day i think i have to do a video on that more in general because i picked up more empty compacts and refill cushions and i'm just using it with every single foundation in the past year or so that is how i've been applying every single foundation like it's already in a compact and i like just put my beauty blender in there and i go to town you get the most minimal amount of product to build like i again i keep saying this but like the least amount of product on my face the better so this one you get a little what do you call this like a i want to call it a sponge but it feels more like a pressed powder thing and then your compact is inside this is in the shade 02 uh, ivory warm they also sent me the shader the shader the shade lighter than this uh, I've used this only once and I really liked it. it. It just feels like a really nice BB cream. The shade is not super perfect for me so I'm going to have to play with it more but I will definitely get back to you on this. We'll probably include this in like an Asian beauty video roundup because I have been making purchases from ooh, 
from Misha as well as some Sasa. So I definitely will get back to you guys on this. They also sent over these three, what are they calling them? I think it's like lip water tattoos. The colors are so, <laughs> wow. Okay, so the pink one, obviously I would not wear. It's just, it's just not a color that I like. I don't wear pink, you guys just, I just don't. But this orange, I've worn this a couple times to test it out. Look at that, like how beautiful is that? Oh, it's so pretty. And then this is the red. I'm debating about whether I want to wear this red or not because my brother's getting married next week. And then, so next week I'm going to be in Virginia pretty much. I don't know if this is going to go up before or after. I don't know when this will be edited and up, but this is the red. And I was thinking about wearing this for like his reception. It is such a beautiful color. I mean, these apply so opaque. They go... They look beautiful in one pass, but like I put them on and I let it dry and then I put it on again. They aren't um, glossy as a finish. They're more like a, a satin, which I think generally I find satin to be like the most beautiful finish. I'm not a big fan of matte lip looks. I think they look great on Instagram and in editorial type, I don't know, situations. For every day, I don't like a matte lip. I like my lips to look plump, smooth, I don't know, hydrated? <laughs> is that is that a word we can be using now? So these go on so beautifully, you definitely don't even need a lip liner. You can just kind of clean up the edges with the concealer, but I really, really like these. Um, let me swatch the pink one, although I don't know, I haven't never, oh my God, yeah, I would never wear that. Maybe if you were doing like a gradient lip, or yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. Like I'm not even gonna deny that that's a beautiful color. It's just not a me color. I don't know, oh my God. The formula on these is beautiful. Pigmentation, everything. So I would recommend these. I can recommend these to you right now. I just haven't tried the Cushion Compact yet. And those are all from Keep In Touch. All right, next up we have Makeup Forever. <sighs> Makeup Forever. Guys, if Makeup Forever was like, hey, let us send you some stuff, are you gonna say no? Like, seriously. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing they sent over was their uh, Makeup Forever, well, duh, their Ultra HD Foundation. I have the shade 120. It is a perfect winter shade for me, but I probably could not wear it if I even got even like a pinch darker. So this is the box. I mean, hello, how beautiful. And then you pull it out and then there was the three foundations in here. Like, hello, beautiful press kit. And then you have two shades in there. Those two shades are way too light for me. So I think I have to do some kind of giveaway, but it's kind of hard to do. Like, how do you do a giveaway when it's like for someone who's real light? Like how do, well, whatever, we'll figure that out. Or if you have suggestions, please leave them below as to how we can do that. This foundation is beautiful. I would say it's definitely like medium coverage. It looks beautiful like, you know, when you take a picture with flash photography. I do find that if you do have a dry spot, it will catch. It doesn't do anything to camouflage like a dry spot. But other than that, I think it's a beautiful foundation. I really like using it with a beauty blender. Um, it also looks really beautiful applied with like a foundation brush, specifically the Makeup Forever kind of foundation brush. Uh, when we went to Generation Beauty, uh, Makeup Forever had given us some decent swag in terms of brushes, and that one foundation brush is beautiful. Anyway, beside the point, this foundation, it looks great. I think if you have oily skin, I think a lot of oily skin people will really like this. Because um, it's, it's not, it doesn't leave a dewy finish. It leaves kind of, for me, I think it leaves kind of like a satin finish. So I like that, it looks it looks like skin in that sense, but again, it does kind of catch on a dry spot. So you wanna either use a really great primer, which, oh my God, the Makeup Forever primers, super amazing. Anyway, let's just move on. We've talked about the foundation. Um, there's a bajillion reviews on this. So, you know, I mean, I'm not saying anything new here. This is just like my personal experience. I think if you have oily skin, normal skin, combo skin, dry skin. Everyone who has different skin types, I've noticed, like all the dry skin people have like the same kind of experience and people who are oily have the same kind of experience with this foundation. So I feel like uh, a lot of the reviews you've been watching have been fairly accurate. I was sent four of their primers. <sighs> I cannot even begin to explain how much I love these. The nourishing primer and the hydrating primer were originally in my Sephora VIB list and like to, for, to buy during the sale because um, I just really, I've loved Amer uh, Makeup Forever primers. I'm not, I was never really an avid primer user until maybe this year. 
Um, I did that Scandinavia video, which you guys have seen, and like that kind of prompts me into like really thinking and considering like primers as like a you know important step and i feel like when i was younger i think the younger you are you have really great skin primers might not be necessary but at this point i'm what 32 i feel like i have like a new love for primers because i see pores or i see areas that i can kind of correct really easily or foundation can just go on so much better if i prime correctly my extreme extreme love is the nourishing primer this is probably a third of the way gone already i'm gonna have to repurchase it it is in a white tube it is super dirty because i use it pretty much every day i will probably i mean i mean since winter's right around the corner we'll have to do like a skin prep video as well as maybe a skincare video i feel like that's on the horizon i've been getting a lot of requests for skincare videos this thing i feel like if you just have normal skin you could skip your moisturizer and just apply this but I'm someone that really likes to have a moisturized and emollient base in the winter. Like I do not want at any point in the day to see a dry spot. So I usually go in with an oil, let that go into the skin. Then I go on with like a moisturizer, like a cream moisturizer. And then I let that sit, you know, you go make your coffee. And then when I sit down, I put on like this, this primer. This is the best. It feels amazing. Like I cannot... It just winter everyone just run out and go get this even if you have oily skin and you just kind of get like a dry spot on your nose like use this just prime your nose you prime your one dry spot this is so amazing um in tandem with this i use the mattifying primer i know seems weird kind of productive but i have really i don't know how to explain this i have really shiny skin it's not oil like after i blot those areas that are shiny it is still shiny it's not oil like you can run your finger over there's no oil it's just shiny like my skin is like reflective i don't know how to explain it so i have normal skin with a t-zone that like you know the oil will break through after a few hours and i'll have to block so what i have been doing is like when i first sit down to do my makeup i'll put on like my eye primer my eye primer always goes on first then i take the mattifying primer and i apply it right above my brows and then right along the sides of my nose because that is where i get shiny and then i go in with the rest of my face with these this nourishing primer so these two have been like my super super favorite i have loved using both of these obviously this one you know putting it on the whole face and i get real i get real like you know generous with this i really love this and then this i use very sparingly so this one is still quite full but right above my eyebrows and right on the sides of my nose which is where i always feel like i look shiny totally mattifies it and it just kind of again makes the makeup last longer being a mattifying primer in those areas these other two are also really great they're just not things that i reach for often because i feel like primers you know that you buy a primer based on what concern like what skin concern you want to battle and one of them this one is a hydrating primer i originally thought that i want the hydrating primer over the nourishing primer but i have found that most nourishing primers are actually super super moisturizing whereas hydrating primers i think kind of just hold whatever current moisture you have in your skin like it doesn't really allow that to escape they're usually silicone based this feels very much like any kind of silicone based primer you would use it leaves your skin feeling super silky super smooth makeup will glide on super easily so if you're looking for that kind of primer this is what that does and it kind of like runs over any kind of texture you have on your face so that stuff can glide on and not sit inside or above or awkward on your skin so that's this the last one is the smoothing primer this one's the your pore filler and i have noticed in maybe the past couple years my pores right around my like right to the left and right side of my nose are more visible and this does a great job of that uh, I'm always hesitant to use pore filling type primers every single day I've tried Asian brands and I've tried you know the benefit professional and I just feel like I don't know how to explain this this might be just my brain but to me it's like you have a groove so you're gonna fill it with a primer and it creates an even base but then does it do you feel like then it keeps your groove that size you know what i'm saying like if you have a, a hole and you're filling the hole up then doesn't that just make that hole either that size continue to be that size or bigger so i mean again not a dermatologist not someone that creates makeup products doesn't really know that much about how these kind of things work but i'm just always i'm not someone that uses a pore kind of a pore filler type primer every day it just it will never be something that i do because i'm like i'm weird about that so if any of you guys can dispel that myth in my mind that would be great let me know what's really going on with kind of pore filling things or it literally or if it's literally just like a visual thing 
Makeup Forever has come out with a ton of lashes. They're calling it the Lash Show. Very sexy, very fun. They sent me four different ones. And I'm gonna get into it. Like, I have a lot to say. I feel like I should be doing like a Makeup Forever video exclusively because it is so good. Like, everything here, amazing. The one I'm wearing is in the Natural Impact line and it's number 305 and it's what I have on the lids. On the lids, yeah, on the lids. Today, I had to cut them. I always have to cut lashes, but I mean, I think that's good. Always make everything bigger for everyone and people can trim down. But I just think they look really beautiful. They're really, really, really beautiful looking. Um, and I'll get into more detail after I show you guys the rest of the lashes because, <laughs> all right, these are Creative Impact. These are number eight. These are number 813, like, what? Like, come on, like, makeup forever. The, like, my lips aren't even as big as this. Like, I didn't, <laughs> when I saw these lashes, I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with these. Like, I felt kind of like, <laughs> stab, like, what? Like, do you guys see these? Like, I'm sure these will, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these, something. Maybe I'll put them on like a stuffed animal, I don't know. And then these are the Natural Impact number 103. These are super beautiful. They kind of taper out to the end. Super, I'm so excited to use these. And then these are, oh, these are Creative Impact. I can't wait for these either. They are number 709. So that's what 709 looks like. They're super like gathered and thick at the base and they kind of flare out at the bottom. I think they're gonna look so gorgeous. All right, so let's get into details. There's so much about these lashes that I love. A, their packaging has changed. Uh, you get, you know, a standard box, but there's like a little tab. I don't know if this is gonna show. It'll show, yeah. So there's like a little tab right here. So let's say you have your stiletto nails on. I mean, you can still pull these lashes out, all right? And so the packaging, great. There's something about the way their band is made. Like, I was reading the press about it, and it just said that, you know, it's like a flexible band. Let me read you guys some press. Um, there's 50 of these lashes, there's 50 styles, 27 natural styles, and 23 creative, creative impact styles. Uh, they hold for long wear and continued use over time. They're synthetic, they're 100% synthetic, and they're lightweight, and they have a flexible, resilient band that adapts perfectly to any eye shape. I don't know how to explain, I feel like it's not even a band. It feels like it's like really good string or really good thread because when you apply them to your lashes, I feel nothing when I wear these, like absolutely nothing. And they just seem, they're like super, oh, what's the word, like malleable. They seem like they just, you know, when you set them on your eye, you can just like kind of like push them into the base of your lashes and it just like flows. You know how like when you get a lot of fake lashes, you kind of have to do that thing where you kind of like pull them out and like twist them back and forth a little bit to give it a little more flexibility. You do not have to do these with these. You do not have to do that with these lashes. Oh, I got so tongue tied. <clears throat> there was so much spit that collected. Okay. And I, I just, I love them. I feel like they look, they look so beautiful. I mean, if they don't look cute, it's because I, I didn't apply them properly. It's, the, it's not the lashes. Well. The lashes are fantastic. I love them so much. They really, they feel like nothing. In each lash, you get this like little tiny vial of lash glue. It looks very unassuming. You're like, whatever. And you get this kind of, I think it's like a rubberized tip. And you just like run it right along the lash. You get the perfect amount of product. Perfect. It doesn't get goopy. It doesn't get weird. It dries clear and it dries really fast. Now, drying fast, I like that because I don't like sitting and waiting for lash glue to dry. People are like, you know, you're blowing, you're shaking. It's like the lash glue dry dance, whatever you want to call it. I don't like doing that. I like this, you put it on like within five, no, let's be, let's be real. Within like 10 seconds, you can set that lash and then move it around and it's done. So A, dries clear, B, dries fast. C, you don't get like a weird goopy line because this, it distributes the exact amount of product you will need for that lash. Maybe you can drop a little more on the edges. I mean, a lot of us do that so that it doesn't lift on the sides. Uh, another great thing, when it comes to removing these lashes, like, okay, nine times out of 10, I use makeup remover and I like slowly lift it off. But every so often, it just you just get into the bathroom and you rip them off because you just can't deal with it anymore. Like you just want your face to be clean. Even when you do that, it still comes off. 
I don't know how to explain to you that like even though it holds crazy well it's also super easy to remove and then after you remove them from your eyes removing the excess glue or the remaining glue from the lash also super super easy mm, so basically i can't say enough good stuff about this lash glue i went on to sephora's website to see if they sell this lash glue by itself because i would buy this and make this my everyday lash glue i mean it's currently my everyday lash glue it's like i've ripped open all the lash boxes and pull out the glue to have the glue because I use this with every single eyelash I have like whenever I'm wearing fake lashes like I'm using this glue now whenever the moment I got this glue and I started using it I've only been using this glue like I don't even care about my other eyelash glues like this is the best glue I've ever used so I know it's totally like not something that they are even talking about like oh everybody look at our lash it's such a good lash glue it's amazing the last item from Make It Forever we're gonna talk about right is this the last item yes the Artist Shadow Palette, the 15 pan palette that's been released for the holidays this year. This is what made me buy the like nudes palette from the VIB sale. I have heard about this constantly, how great this formula is. I just never picked any of the shadows up. You know what it is? You know what I actually think it is? Um, there's, it's, there's two reasons. A, even though I liked the Make It Forever shadows before, I wasn't like obsessed with them. Like I would probably have never bought like a palette from them. But the other thing is like I think I was just like lazy to go to Sephora and like pick out my shades to create a palette. Like I was like, oh, maybe I'll just go and get like a three pan because it's like cheaper and you get the free whatever. I was just lazy and I didn't do it. So I'm really glad Makeup Forever sent this because now I get it. Like now it has like moved its way up into like the top 10, not top 10, top 5 makeup um, eyeshadow formulas. This is what it looks like. You get 15 shades. And you might be looking at it like, okay, well, I can't really do, there's like no really matte shades, there's no transition color. Yeah, that's true. I think there's an issue where people are not understanding, like, you know, when Anastasia Beverly Hills or like Makeup Forever, when they come out with an artist palette, when there is the word artist ahead of the word palette, you need to know that it's typically made for a makeup artist in mind where they already have other shades. Like if you look at a lot of the makeup artist type palettes, it's typically like all shimmers, all mattes, all creams. It's all like, it's usually like all something. There's like a singular thing, that like a common denominator in terms of texture or finish or application because makeup artists need variety. They need to be able to mix and match. So I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, well, I can't create a whole look with that palette. Well, you it's probably not meant to it's probably meant to be used in tandem with another palette which i think honestly as a makeup junkie a makeup hoarder makeup reviewer whatever you want to call people like us who either make videos or who watch these kinds of videos we have another palette that we can use you know anyway um i had mentioned this in my viv haul but like there is something about it's like it's unassuming you look at the shadows you're like oh the colors are you know they're not like not dupable and you look at you know it's like there's shimmers there's mattes there's satins but the thing is like there's something so different about the way makeup forever has done this like you look at like a color like this like teal right here you're like oh okay but you get your finger in there and it's like all you get is pigment like you don't feel like there's anything beyond that like, i don't know how to explain it it's weightless and like it's almost like a cream like it almost borderline feels like a cream it's amazing um and the colors are so true like what you see in the pan there is no difference in what you see on your finger it might even be better it's like i want to do like a swatch fest for you guys but like they're just so like look at that color like how beautiful is that like and they all give off more dimension and they're more beautiful than you think. Like I just, ugh, go. This is like one of the best formulas that's been released in a really, really long time. This is totally random to include in like a video like this, but I was, I was checking my mail and I saw this like bubble mailer from Harper's Bazaar. I'm like, okay, so I subscribed to that magazine. I'm like, I wonder what they could possibly like randomly send you. And I opened it up and there was like this little case and there was like a little sample of the Chanel Chance perfume. And I'm like, okay. That seems pretty cool. I guess that's all right. I'm not super obsessed with this fragrance, but thank you for the free sample. But then I was like, oh my God, maybe I have to check like the pouch. The pouch has Chanel kind of, you know, emblazoned on it. Okay, is it gonna focus? 
anyway yeah you can see Chanel's on there it's so cute so now I have like this really nice quality pouch that says Chanel on it I thought I'd share that with you if any of you guys subscribe to Harper's Bazaar the magazine let me know if you got this like and do they do this a lot are magazines doing this now where they like they send you random gifts because that's totally awesome lastly we have some swag from Andrew um, I didn't know where, I was like, I want to haul this stuff, but where can I put it? I'm like, oh, I'll just put it in like my what's in my mailbox haul because Andrew will randomly send me cute stuff. I'm like, he's the best. I'm going to link him below. I mean, if you've been watching this channel at all this year, you know who Andrew is. Like, it's like, not a surprise. So this randomly appeared in my mailbox. I was like, I, I did not order anything from Nordstrom. And it's the Mac Vamplify. I put this on Instagram in case you guys haven't seen it. It's called Anything But Demure. And it's sold out. There's still a whole bunch of different shades on the MAC website when I checked like a couple of days ago, but this color is not on there. And it's anything but demure. I love the formula of this. It goes on and it just, it's, oh, it's so beautiful. So I, I really like this. It's like a My Lips But Better. I know it looks a little darker here, but like I tend to press things in, into my lips. And then when I went to go visit uh, Andrew in New York for Generation Beauty, he had bought one for himself and he's like, oh, I'm going to return it. I'm like, no, it's, you can, it's like not gettable right now and I love it. So he gave it to me. Um, so I have two. I'm excited about that. He also gave me this Kiko brush. He t I think he talked about it in his recent favorites video. It's the number 200. Looks like this. It's a beautifully cut uh, blending brush for your eye. The only issue I had with it was like, okay, but I do this with every brush. When I get a brush, I literally like go back and forth and I see if any hairs come out. And I had a whole bunch of hairs come out, but it is just like, it blends beautifully. If you're trying to diffuse that area, like right between your brow bone and your transition color or your crease shade, ugh, so gorgeous. I'm pretty sure you could also contour your nose with this really beautifully. When I got there, Andrew had given me this lipstick um, from NARS, the, one of the NARS Audacious lips, Lipsticks in Barbara. I have had z I have bought zero Audacious lipsticks, so I was really happy to get one from him. Uh, and this is what it looks like. I don't know, like with the Makeup Forever shadows and like the Audacious lipsticks, I just have not been on this bandwagon of like trying out really like you know stuff that everyone's like in love with. But that's Barbara. The formula of these is so smooth, so creamy, so opaque. I get the hype now. I understand why people are like collecting shades. Um, it's beautiful. Another thing, this also, this showed up in my mailbox after I got back from New York. Uh, while I was in New York, we had gone to the NARS boutique there. And I picked up a, a matte lipstick, one of their like exclusive to like boutique colors and even their matte lipsticks aren't super matte so that's why i picked it up otherwise you know i'm not into matte lipsticks like that and andrew picked up cruising this is one of their sheer lipsticks and cruising and he picked this this up and i was like i'm totally gonna get that during the vib sale well he sent it to me so i don't have to get it but i love this the formula is amazing it's like a my lips but better color so this right here is cruising it is beautiful it will it will generally i feel like kind of smooth out and even out the color of your lips. I love this formula so much that I think when beauty.com did 20% off, I think I picked up another one of these lipsticks in a different shade. I can't remember. I think I got, was it Barbarella or Belle de Jour? I love this formula. Like This is also one of those lipsticks that you can just like keep in your purse and just reapply during the day. I use this the way I would use like the YSL Rouge, um, Rouge Sheer Candies, is that what it is? The kind of balmy ones. Love, 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 love. Last but not least, Andrew, I think he also talked about this in his favorites, his most recent video. So I'm going to link that below since clearly all this stuff he's talked about already also. It's the EX1 Invisiwear Liquid Foundation. Uh, this is F200. Uh, I think he had picked up two shades because he wasn't sure. And then one of them was the shade, obviously. So when I came, he's like, you have to try this foundation. He's like, this might be your shade. It totally is my shade. I don't think I can wear it like in the dead of winter, but I can definitely wear it like, you know, as the sun comes out and I get a little bit more color. It's like it's like kind of like an awkward stage for me. I'm like an NC25 and this is just ever so slightly too dark on me right now. But it's beautiful and it's it's the shade range was formulated for people who have warmer complexions, more olive complexions. I doubt that if you are cool tone you're gonna find your shade anywhere in this range but I don't know that much about this brand I just know that this foundation has been super loved by like Kathleen Lights and who else like I don't know I love her I love watching her but I can't think of I know a lot of people when you watch their makeup collection videos have a lot of these foundations in there so I know that's quite popular and quite well loved 
I love the finish of this. It looks super beautiful. It leaves like a nice little glow on your face, but not overly so where like if you're oily, you're like, Ugh, I can't do it. It's pretty. And again, this is shade F200. So that is my first what's in my mailbox video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was not too long. I mean, there was so much good stuff here and I really wanted to give it a proper review. Um, I would much rather give you a big review than like do really mini reviews. I don't know. I don't, it's just me. I don't like watching like three minute videos or five minute videos. I like watching like a 15 minute plus video. So if you don't like that, I, I guess, I, I guess I'm sorry, but like I, tend to make videos that I like. Like I love watching reviews, I love watching hauls, I love watching longer videos. So that those are the videos that I will tend to churn out because that's what I like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun sharing it with you and please leave uh, any of your recommendations below in terms of other things from the brands I mentioned that I need to be trying. It is often that I'm sent something from a brand and that is my first experience with it. So if I can learn more about it or know about other products that other people love, I am all on board for something like that. So let me know your recommendations and I will talk to you guys really soon.